Meet the innovators of NAM. Uh, I'm Dimitri Vitsa. I'm the CEO of Rock, Paper, Scissors and the event director of Music Tectonics, the conference, the host of the Music Tectonics podcast. And uh, we've got a few minutes until the session fully kicks off because what we're doing is a little remix culture for Music Tectonics where we have an event happening with our Music Tectonics world in Hopin. And then we also are live streaming this to NAM. So those of you who aren't familiar with NAM, NAM is this huge musical instrument uh, conference that normally takes place in person in Anaheim, uh, California, Southern California. It's, uh, it's insane. The first time I went, I was so overwhelmed. It's a huge, huge convention center, one of the biggest I've ever been to. And it is filled with musical instruments, microphones, um, light, stage lighting, and lots and lots and lots of fog machines. So many fog <laughs> machines. I've never seen so many fog machines. And uh, when you go there, it's just, it's insane. There's a whole uh, convention center uh, exhibit hall filled with just drums and cymbals. It is the loudest place I think I've ever been. And people are having a blast. They're just like, just trying out every new type of cymbal or snare or bass drum or whatever. And then you go to the next place and you know you see a bunch of cool hung drums and tongue drums and <laughs> all the other crazy stuff and then occasionally you'll see some big booth filled with cool very retro modular analog synthesizers with wires coming out everywhere the dude's showing them off or there's this group from germany and they've got white lab coats on and they look very serious and they help total goofballs like me just start plugging in wires and making the craziest sounds but the thing is about nam that's crazy is that if you're really interested in innovation and new technology and just mixing things up, it's actually super difficult to find all the cool stuff. It's spread out all over the place and you're literally like wearing yourself out on these concrete floors trying to find things to hook up with all the the, the, the crazy pants innovators who are coming up with the new stuff. Sometimes there's, there's like a, a basement room with tons of like super innovative stuff um, like the the small startups, but then you know there's plenty of big companies that have evolved, and we've got you know cool synths or, or sequencers or new expressive controllers. Obviously, the whole software side of things as well. So um, we decided for Nam that's going digital, which we're super bummed. I was you know I always love going out to Anaheim and, and meeting with folks and playing with instruments and and you know how it is in person. Plus the sun shines there. Um, we decided for the digital version that we would actually take advantage of the fact that we could get all these innovators into a couple of sessions. So this is one of three sessions that we're doing this week where we've kind of handpicked through our network or sent out the word and saw what come back, saw what came back um, to what we think are kind of some really interesting companies or interesting products, artists that could present some of this new technology to you. Um, so we're here for a few more minutes before we launch into the NAM session. So I know Chagall's here ready to demonstrate Mimu gloves, but we're going to wait just a few more minutes. <laughs> uh, what do you got on your bookshelf there? Is that your home library? No, this is like where my interest in music recording began. So uh -huh. all, all my, my original yeah. <laughs> <laughs> recording <Boom> equipment. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Yeah, cool. It's a good setup. It looks kind of like the, uh, the the NPR tiny desk uh, background with with cool stuff on the shelves. I like I'm it. Just trying to look smart. Yeah, it's looking <laughs> good. It's looking good. Where are you today? I'm in Amsterdam. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. Um, so we've that's. I mean, that's the other advantage of today versus a normal NAM is not only can we gather folks together around the concept of innovation, we we actually don't have to travel, and so we've got a great international lineup today, which is super awesome. Um, those of you who are here listening and hop in, feel free to go to the stage chat and introduce yourself. I see some of you are doing that already. You know, part of what we like to do at Music Tectonics is uh, help connect people. And there's a networking component to hop in that we love. So at the end of our demos, you'll see on the left side of your screen right now, it says stage live in red. Well, that live button, there'll be a red live button next to networking. And what that will mean is when you click on that, you'll get randomly matched up with somebody else that's here in the hop in group for five minutes of spontaneous video chat networking. It's like chat roulette, but minus um, all the creepy people. This is all the music tech innovators. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it's super fun. You don't know, you might end up finding out that some old friend is here or someone you just tried to message on uh, LinkedIn uh, is there. So it's, it's super fun. So make sure to stick around for that. And when you see the red light on networking, just jump in. We've got folks in the chat uh, coming in from 
uh, Chicago, Stockholm. I'm in Bloomington, Indiana. Um, Chagall mentioned she's in Amsterdam. I know, John, you're in the New York area. Uh, oh, you're in Connecticut. Okay, got it. Um, and it seems like almost everybody's pretty cold. <laughs> got anybody who's warm? Got anyone? But I, Corey's up in Portland, Maine. Awesome to have you. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah. By the way, if you don't know, Music Tectonics also has a podcast. We just put out today's um, issue uh, or edition episode um, that is with uh, Damian Manning from HiFi, which is a company that kind of brings together all revenue streams for artists to see in one place. A uh, super interesting uh, conversation about fragmentation in uh, the music industry and how artists are uh, kind of addressing that. And one of his big points is you have to know what's happening out there to see what moves the needle financially to know what to do. So that's kind of interesting. We've got Stephen Oliver in LA, Brian Cullis in LA, uh, Brett Porter's in New Jersey. So we're getting some good ge geographic diversity. Glad somebody here, Brian and Stephen, is getting some sunshine. <laughs> So that's good. All right, I think we're getting ready here to start the live stream to NAM as well. Glad we warmed up with everybody at NAM. Uh, Eleanor, I'm assuming that we are live to NAM. Give me a sign. Yes, here we go. Great. Okay. Well, welcome to Meet the Innovators of NAM. Uh, my name is Dimitri Vitsa. I'm the CEO of Rock, Paper, Scissors. We're a PR firm that specializes in music technology. I'm also the event director of Music Techno Te excuse me, Music Tectonics, which is a conference we started in LA in October of 2019. We brought it online in 2020. We're going to go online again in 2021. We haven't quite announced the dates yet, but know that late October, we're going to do that again. And... Uh, Music Tectonics also has a podcast that comes out every week, so feel free to check that out. And we do a lot of online events. So come over to musictectonics.com, sign up for the newsletter, and you'll be posted about all these crazy things we do. So those of you at NAM who are watching, thanks for joining. We have another audience on Hop In um, as well. And uh, we just basically decided we wanted to give NAM an experience where we brought together a lot of innovator innovators uh, that are building and playing some of the coolest instruments that you can find at NAM. It's super tough sometimes to find all that stuff in the huge convention center at uh, in Anaheim. But we found that using uh, kind of this digital method, we could put everybody on stage today. So we've got several things coming up. Um, we're going to hear from Mimu Gloves. We're going to get Chagall to demo that in just a minute. We've got Brian Cullis from Native Instruments, who will be after that with the Machine Plus, which is their first standalone machine. Um, Tobias von Hofsen is going to do a rapid demo of several of Teenage Engineering's new products. Super fun, easy to access, uh, way to get into synth, sequencing, and drums. And then we've got Stephen Oliver and Corey Sims from Audionomics. This is a, a change-up of, of the instrument thing. They do something really cool, which is stem separation of your tracks, and they ha now have a cloud-based stem separation service. So if you take your tracks and you want to pull out the the drums, the the vocals, the bass, so you can then do remixes or offer them for sync or lots of other stuff. They'll talk about that. And then finally, we wrap up with one of the early uh, keyboard synth innovators, Casio. Mike Martin's going to bring in one of their uh, digital pianos to show off. So kind of a full circle kind of vibe with some crazy stuff and then getting all the way back to a, a digital keyboard. So if everyone's ready, I think, uh, Chagall, I'd love to hand it over to you. Please, in the chats, let's have a warm welcome for, for Chagall with Mimu Gloves. Thank you. You can't hear it, but they're, they're thinking thoughts of I'm, clapping. I'm, I'm imagining clapping. Right. It sounds great. Hi, hello, I'm Chagall. I'm um, from Mimu and I'm here in Amsterdam um, wearing the Mimu Gloves. You might have heard about them. They're uh, basically gestural controllers for music. So you can use the movement of your hands um, to control anything MIDI or OSC. Um, but the gloves are just a body and the brains are actually inside my laptop that I've hidden over here. And it's running our new application called Glover. And um, something really exciting to announce today is that we're releasing Glover on the 4th of February. And uh, Glover is the basically the brains of the gloves, everything creative that you want to do, all the mappings between your hands and between the music that you have in your hands, in your head, you will have in your hands. <laughs> and um, it's, it's, a, it's a, I'm really proud of it and I'm very excited for it to, it to come out. Um, it will also support 
at par next to the glove, it will also support our new um, phone app, Gliss, that basically turns your phone into a gesture controller as well. Anyway, we're here to demo, so um, I'm going to do that. <laughs> okay, I'm going to be making some music and speaking through what I'm doing at the same time. And hopefully you'll hear everything. Give me a sign if not. Um, I am going to flick both of my hands to start a track. So this track is consisting of multiple layers that I can control the volume of by making different postures and then waving my arms around. So I'm going to start taking out the synths by making two finger point. So now I'm basically controlling the volume slider. And I'm going to take out that focal loop and the synths. So all we have left is the kick. So now I'm going to make two different postures. Um, I'm going to make a rock sign with my left hand and a secret finger with my right. So I'm basically triggering a chord with my left hand and I'm controlling the volume of it with my right hand. And then the further I roll my right wrist, I can affect the sound at the same time. So I have all of these different types of controls in a very sort of natural way. Okay, so, so we can measure the bend of the fingers and that's where based upon um, which Glover decides what postures you're making. You train those postures yourself, by the way. Um, but we can also detect peaks in our movement. So for, you can play drums. So now we've looped, looped those play some chords and the further I move to my right the more noise there is on the sound so I'm originally a singer and uh, I really enjoy affecting my voice with these things. So I'm gonna make a secret finger up here and then I'm gonna record my voice and then play you back the waveform. Blah, 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 I'll just show you. I can capture you. what I just sang kind of in this space in front of me and I can scrub through it and then I'm waiting I'll make a puppet hand I can pitch it up pitch it down maybe just leave it there okay let's have some more drums oh no there <laughs> And now I can grab the cue of the whole track, take all the high off to make some space for some more vocals. So as long as I have this puppet hand up here, there's harmonies. No harmonies? Oh. And bring the track back. And then let's take that kick out. We've heard it long enough. Oh no, I want to keep that one. Take the 
drums out. And the sins. Um, yeah, and all of these controls are completely up to you. You make the decisions, what movements match your, what sounds. Um, I've been doing this for a few years and it's really been amazing. So thank you for watching, listening. The end. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Love it. Thank you, Chagall. That thank was great. You. Perfect. Thank you so much. Your voice is beautiful and it was so cool to hear you do that. And to be able to explain it at the same time is pretty amazing. Um, you know, like to, to reveal it and be transparent about that. I'm sure there's so much involved with actually just setting things up. <laughs> How hard <laughs> is it to get everything set up to, to do a performance? How long does it take? Yeah. Um, it depends. Uh, I mean, not that long. Yeah. 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 No, it's, it's, uh, it, the, I, get, having the idea is harder than actually making it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Cause cool. that's, I, I know you've got a lot of reasons going there. Yeah, I just turned it off. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's great. Um, somebody from NAM is asking, are you pulling sound out of Ableton? Yeah, so uh, everything you just heard. Well, actually, the, the harmonies and the reverb is on a TC Helicon Voice Life Touch 2, which I control with MIDI as well. Um, and all of the other stuff is happening in Ableton Live, yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, that's great. Shigal, thank you so much. You're getting amazing feedback in the chats on both uh, platforms. Um, and Thanks, really everyone. Um, <laughs> yeah, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right. So we're going to move on to Brian Coolis with Native Instruments. Uh, are you are you with us, Brian? You can put on your, your video and your audio. Look, there it is. I see your I hand. Hello, hello. <laughs> yes, my wonderful hands. <laughs> awesome. How's it going today? It's going well. It's uh, sunny here in Los Angeles. It's a little cold, but uh, it's Los Angeles cold, which is, you know, 80 degrees. So can't complain. Well, thanks for playing with our crazy pants idea of doing this uh, innovative instrument demo with really quick fire demos. I know it's hard to do, um, but uh, appreciate you doing that. So why don't you jump in? Tell us what we're looking at. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, my name is Brian. I'm a global product specialist lead from Native Instruments. And what we're looking at here is basically Native Instruments' very first fully standalone controller. Um, historically, we've always been a software and MIDI controller company, but this is our first fully embedded uh, piece of hardware. So I'm going to basically going to quickly run you through some of the features here while building a track. Um, there's a lot that this uh, this hardware can do, um, but you know, with a shorter presentation, um, I'll kind of give you the the highlights of everything. Um, so the first thing I want to do is kind of sample something, and what I'm doing is I have my phone connected to my hardware, um, and I just found this random. Uh, sound on YouTube that I just want to sample directly into the controller. So first thing I'll do is hit the tempo button and I'm going to set my project's BPM to 84. I'm going to go to the sampling button. Um, and just again, this is all done without a computer. Um, everything's just fully embedded. So first thing I'm going to do is set my detect mode so that any audio coming in will automatically start the sampler. And then I'm gonna turn on monitoring so I could hear the audio coming in through my phone. Now that I'm all set, let us hit start and let's record something in. There we go. All right, so I've sampled that loop into my machine. So now I'm gonna to go to edit here and I'm gonna normalize this just so we can get the volume all the way up and take a listen. Perfect. Next thing I want to do is truncate this or slice the part of the sample that I want. Perfect. So let's truncate it. And then the next step is I want to time stretch this so it will match my project's BPM. So I just go to stretch, I hit settings bring it down to halftime because I want the sample to play a little bit faster. So now if we take a listen. Perfect. 
Perfect. All right. So now that that's sampled in, uh, machine works on this pattern based um, system where you can create different variations using the using the same sound. Um, so in this case, I'm going to go to pattern here. Let's start a new pattern and I'll set this to be four bars long. Um, and then from here, I can start playing in this pad live. So, all right. Turn on the metronome so we can watch. All right, so you could hear that when I played it in, I just played it a little bit off time. Um, so I can just hold shift, hit pad five to quantize, and now everything is locked in. All right, so now that I have my uh, kind of this idea going, the next thing I want to do is create a new group. And the groups are basically collections of 16 pads where I can fill up uh, drum loops, uh, like kick drum or drum loops, uh, one shots, uh, plugins as well, really anything that I want. So I'm going to go to browse and I want to load up a drum kit here. Now machine has tons and tons of expansions, um, that you can, you can purchase on our website. Um, but all these different expansions are just different genres, uh, thousands of, of different drum samples, loops, um, and, and instruments as well. Um, so I'm going to go to this expansion certified gold. Um, and then this list here on the right, these are all the different drum kits that are available with this, uh, with this expansion. Um, so whenever I load any of these kits, all 16 pads will automatically be filled up. They're all curated, uh, so that they all sound really nice together. Um, and again, since this is fully embedded, everything that I have on here is saved on this, uh, this SD card that I have. Um, so I can wirelessly download and install all of these expansions and instruments, um, you know, without having to use a computer. So as I scroll through, there are uh, audio previews for every kit. So I get a, an idea of what the samples are. So let's just take a listen. All right, I like that one. And so now that I've loaded it, you'll be able to hear every pad has a new sound on it. And a great 808. Um, so now that I have the samples loaded, this is the point where I just wanna start recording some ideas and recording some patterns. So I'm gonna hit the pattern button, select the new empty slot, set this to two bars and start recording this in. Now, the way again machine works is based on patterns. So from here, what I'll do is hit pattern and then just hit duplicate. So it copies the kick and the snare and converts it into a new pattern where then I can start adding more elements to it. So rather than being stuck with this enormous loop that has all these different elements, for me, anytime I wanna add a new sound, I just duplicate the pattern. So it makes it a lot easier to arrange everything as I'm, I'm, as I'm working with this record. So let's just start uh, recording in some more samples. Uh, let's get one more. Let's get that 808. Tune it up a little bit. So now that I have these different ideas, I can easily switch between them live.
So let's just keep adding some more elements to it. I have a general idea now. I got the melody in the beginning, my drum pattern. Now I wanna add some sort of melodic element. So I'm gonna make a new group, go back to browser and go over to my instruments. Now, some of these are basically iconic plugins that we've made. Um, and again, these are all fully embedded into the system. Um, so we have classic native instruments plugins like FM8, Massive, Monarch, Prism, um, and many more uh, coming in the near future. Um, so let's say I wanna go to Prism, I can use this filtering system and filter for a particular sound that I'm looking for. So rather than combing through you know, thousands of presets, I can really refine exactly what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna go to pluck strings and we can hear previews as well. All right, that one sounds good. So I'll hit load. Now let's go over to the next slot. Um, there's tons of built-in effects that come with the hardware, um, but there's also additional effects that I can load. Um, one of my favorites is ROM, which is a reverb plugin that we made. And I can load these up like Big Room. I can adjust all the parameters here. Cool. Now I wanna play this melodically, so I'm gonna go to keyboard mode. And right now it's in chromatic, but I can also dial in certain scales that I want. So in this case, I want a minor scale. You can also get pretty funky with the jazz scales, world scales, five tones. There's, you know, at least I think around a hundred different scales that you can choose from. And let's go back to minor and just record in some sort of a pattern. There we go. Um, so yeah, again, from here, this is the point where you can sketch out different ideas. You can arrange your track. You can literally mix everything. Um, and then the last thing I'll leave you with is my personal favorite, these performance effects. Nice. So again, there's a lot that this can do. This is really just, you know, scratching the surface of it. it it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty rough to do a five minute demo, but you did a great job. Brian, there's a question from Brett Porter. If you're already a, a Native Instruments complete user, how does this integrate into that system? Is this only a be slash best standalone like you're demoing here? Um, so yeah, it's a great question. So um, if you already are a uh, an NI complete user, so this is a standalone hard piece of hardware. However, there is a USB port on the back. So I could connect this to my computer and use this just like the Machine Mark III is a MIDI controller. Um, but having it be fully standalone just gives you the portability, the flexibility. And honestly, it's a very different, I'd say, mindset when you're just working with the hardware and you don't have the distractions of, of the computer. Um, so mo all of the expansions that work with machine work on the machine plus. Um, and then right now there's a handful of built-in instruments, but we're continually developing and hopefully we'll have more of these iconic uh, plugins in the future. Cool. And then Jade's asking, are you seeing people export final masters from a, from the standalone unit? Um, yeah. I mean, this is, a, this is a relatively new device. Um, it came out back uh, in the fall, um, but yeah, I can fully do everything that I, I need to here. Um, once I have my idea, my arrangement, um, I can just go to file, um, I can do export audio, and then I can export my master, um, the master file. And then I can connect this to my computer, access the SD card from my desktop, pull the files, or if I want, I could just bounce out the stems and, and do some, uh, you know, final mixing and mastering on my computer, but um, awesome. yeah, completely flexible. Sweet. Great. Great job, Brian. Thanks for bringing this over. Really fun to see what you guys are up to. Um, uh, we posted a link for folks who want to find out more. Um, any other shout outs of where people can find you, Brian, or, or follow up? Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, you can follow us at, on our Instagram, Native Instruments, um, NI News on Twitter. 
Uh, but personally, you can also follow me on Brian Coolis and I. Um, yeah. Sweet. Awesome. Thanks so much, Brian. Round of applause in the chat. You're getting lots of good positive feedback in the chats. There's two different chats. They're hard to follow, but just trust me. <laughs> People are into it. So thanks so much, Brian. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Sweet. Uh, Tobias, if you want to come on camera, we've got uh, Tobias von Hofsten from Teenage Engineering. Um, I'm a dabbler of lots of cool, crazy stuff. Look at him bouncing around on video there. Been bouncing for, for Chagall and uh, now this uh, native uh, instrument thing as well, looking sweet. And Very great. cool, man. And you got some cool shades on, some yellow, uh, some yep. yellow shade. I need to protect sweet. myself from the blue lights, so I gotta, uh, yeah. gotta stay safe. Awesome, man. And, and uh, Teenage Engineering is super fun. For folks that don't know, why don't you tell us about the company and then give us your demos? I, lo I loaded up the web page here. So teenage.engineering, you can go there and check check out what we do. We, we're coming from Sweden today. So, uh, or yeah, we, we are a company from Sweden and I'm in Stockholm now uh, coming, uh, wishing I was in Los Angeles for the real name, but this is uh, as good as it gets right now and I'm enjoying it. So this is the web web page, and I'm gonna show you a little setup that I have prepared. So um, we make synthesizers, we make music uh, music equipment, we make speakers, we make uh, uh, a lot of fun stuff. So this is the OPZ. Press play, and I think I have some audio going right. So right now I have the output going into here the input of this uh, pocket operator going in here to this pocket operator and then going to my mixer. So uh, it seems like it's working. So this is the OPC, but I'm gonna start actually uh, with this one. So this is the pocket operator PO128, the Mega Man unit. Uh, and it's a collaboration we did with uh, Capcom uh, Japan. And we're super happy with this. Uh, if you have ever played the, the Mega, Mega Man games, then you know what to expect. So this is the pocket operator with the original um, uh, sounds from the Mega Man games. Um, and it's based on the PO28, the robot that we put out a few years ago. Um, this has another sequencing layer on top of the two others so it's a bit more complex and and also um the original music from the game uh so from here i'm sending the signal the music signal but i'm also sending a trigger signal so uh the other guy here this po133 street fighter uh is the other capcom collaboration uh, pocket operator that we uh, uh that we recently put out so this is the PO-133 Street Fighter based on the PO-33 Knockout, our, uh, yeah, let's say a Knockout because it's been super, uh, super successful. And uh, people have been making some awesome beats using just the, the pocket operator. So this is taking the, the same unit, but have it adding a uh, Street Fighter theme to it. So if I press play here right now, there's nothing uh, happening because it's waiting for a sync signal. So I'm just using a, a standard uh, stereo cable, like a 3.5 millimeter uh, stereo uh, jack, mini jack. And when I press play here, these will start together. So you can see the, the um, sequencer will start moving. So, and now I have two units playing together uh, and I can change the patterns. Oh. And I have some uh, effects. So if I hold the effects button, I can do some filtering, some stuttering, some repeats and stuff. And of course I can um, do my, my chaining. So if I hold pattern and I go, here, 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 and here. It will play. And now here. So, um, and of course it comes with uh, all the classic, uh, this, the PO133 comes with the classic samples. So right now I go sound and let's go to, yeah, we're already here, 14. 
You might recognize that from the game. Uh, what else here? Some. And I said, as I triggered the sounds, I could see the the characters here from the game moving. Um, so uh, that's something for, with the pocket operators. But I want to go back to the to the OPZ right now because we did some updates to the OPC uh, uh, firmware. So I'm gonna uh, use my human sync skills to synchronize these, and I go to this thing here called Photomatic. And I'm just using my phone. I took, I turned it to uh, uh, flight mode, so nobody's gonna call me. Uh, and I engage Photomatic. And before it was, before it was uh, a way for you to bring photos from your camera to a kind of a sequence layer. Uh, let me record that. Oh. Sorry. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> did I what did I do here? It's all oh, those this is live, so okay, I can I can uh, do this instead. I'm focusing on the on the on the LPZ right now. So there we go, like this. Uh, I also have my my uh, my speaker here on the side. Well, it's <laughs> this wasn't planned. Let's see. Hey, you know uh, the funny thing about Nam is digital Nam. Almost everything that we've seen has been pre-recorded. Yeah, this is uh, that's not how we work it. Yeah, no, this is this is this is the organic stuff here. Innovators are tinkering and stuff. So our, our audience, I think, is patient enough to see you get up to speed with what yeah, you definitely. need to do there. And of course, I mean, everything is a learning experience. So my role in teenage engineering is head of education. So who better to experience this, right? That's awesome. Uh, live in front of Nam. That's, you know, I'm, I'm humbled by this opportunity. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, God. No, but seriously, like there's some and, and online events, there's like, you, you move some spontaneity. You, 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 you kind of remove some of the kind of the energy that you're used to in person, but digitally you can do that stuff too. You just have to be able to take risks. So, I mean, our, all our presenters today are taking a risk by saying, all right, well, <laughs> Our marketing folks and our PR folks really wanted us to do pre-recorded stuff, but all right, Dimitri, we'll try this crazy thing. It's already been awesome, Tobias. Do you want to show a little bit more? Should, or, yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not done. I've got my five minutes. Yeah. No, I go uh, for it. <laughs> so, no, I just want to say quickly that we've yeah. added the abilities to add video into Photomatic. You could do like videos with uh, Unity and the whole um, video pack uh, world, but it's a bit more complex. So this is a super quick and easy way to really spice up a live set or or uh, like a, make a, a music video right on the right in the OPC. And then also here, let's see if this works now. Then I have my if I turn my <laughs> I have my radio here as well, and I'm sampling uh, in the radio. I'll turn the mic down. So this is the OB4, a ma magic radio we call it. And now I turn off the OBZ. I can uh, do like this. It's off. But it's it's continuing playing, right? So I recorded a loop on my radio, and if I hold a button here, you can hear that I can manipulate the the, the sound here. There we go. So. <laughs> That's that's it for uh, the teenage engineering uh, crazy setup here. Um, awesome. If you want to check out all this stuff, you can go to our website. Like I said, uh, we have the uh, all the bits and, and goodies here. 
Magic Radio. And hey, Tobias, it, before you go, real quick, tell, yeah, so yeah. explain that Magic Radio because we got to see a little bit of it. It's you're using it as a sampler. What what all does it do? Uh, so it's an FM radio, and first and foremost, it sounds incredible. That's that's it. And you know, I I can't really uh, convey the sound through this setup here because it's uh, you got to experience it. And we're we're super happy with it, but it's it's hard to to uh, really uh, make it justice by just talking about it. So if you get a chance to listen to it, then uh, um, we think you're gonna like it. So it's an FM radio. It does um, uh, Bluetooth as well, of course. It has uh, a disc mode that uh, where we added a, a bit of extra fluff. Uh, it's got like a mantra box. It's called Karma, so it can play you kind of a uh, meditative uh, music and it's also got um, a way to make ambient music based off of what you feed it basically so so it's a um, it's a way to experience the radio or any sound in in um, slightly more um, hands-on ways so you can you can be an active radio listener rather than a passive radio listener and it's also got a tape so it will uh, record two hours of continuous music, and then you can rewind that. So if you have your favorite game show or favorite track, you want to hear that again, you can just rewind and uh, enjoy the FM radio uh, um, sound. Back again. Yeah, man. Very cool. Awesome. Course, like I'm, I'm, you can use it. It's battery powered. So you can use it as your boom box when you're out and playing with the pocket operators. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Lots of you guys have a lot of fun, don't you, Tobias? We do, we do, and we're dead serious about having fun. So uh, <laughs> follow us and, and check out what we do. And uh, I think you'll you'll uh, leave this Nam session with a smile. That's awesome. That's Def definitely. Thank you so much, Tobias. Teenage dot engineering to find out more. Exactly. Tobias, lots of positive energy, including all of our conversation about having a live event and, and, and how, how cool it is to have a little bit more of that energy and spontaneity. So good job and appreciate you being here. Enjoy the rest of the show. I will. Thank you so much for inviting me. Awesome. And uh, if uh, Stephen Oliver and Corey Sims can make their way to the stage from Audionomics, that's our fourth. Our next uh, demo is coming from those guys. And hey, Corey. And then Mike Martin hey, will be up hey, after hey. that. Uh, Mike, you can just hang tight for a few more minutes, hopefully. Yep. Good to see you. All right. Here. Uh, uh, so Corey and Steven, good to see you guys. Welcome. Hey, thanks. Thanks, Dimitri. <laughs> so thanks for jumping into our crazy uh, uh, instrument open mic. And here we get to go into the software world and do something totally different, which I love. Why don't you guys just jump in and tell us about Audionomics? Yeah, awesome. Well, thank you so much for uh, uh, for having us in the hardworking team at uh, Rock, Paper, Scissor. Uh, also, incredible demos uh, with everyone from Chagall to Brian and Tobias and what they're doing. Very cool stuff. Um, so we're happy to be on this panel. Um, and let me tell you a little bit about Audionamics. Uh, they've been pushing the boundaries with innovative AI technology for sound, music, and films. Uh, they started as a research-only company in Paris and then quickly expanded to LA, uh, where they've been doing really incredible work for over 10 years. Uh, you might know their award-winning software called Extract Stems, uh, which automatically separates a fully mixed song into its individual parts or stems. Uh, or they have their dial instant dialogue cleaner that can take out complex audio problems in a broadcast, like a honking horn, or blustery winds, or uh, or it automatically removes these sonic elements for a cleaner, more enjoyable listening experience. Um, and so this year, they've ambitiously redesigned their whole product line and upgraded their algorithms that are now exclusively available for content owners, rights holders, and music companies. Uh, and due to some confidentiality, I can only talk vaguely about some of their amazing uh, cool projects that they've worked on in the past, um, but some of the use cases, right, are creating stems for sync licensing for major motion trailers and movies, removing the audio of expired licensed songs from a TV show, uh, restoring old audio recordings for legacy artists, or separating out the stems from live recordings so that they can be remixed um, and 
um, in, in release for the first time for new uh, to their fans. So, you know, their work is often behind the scenes and little attention is given to what these guys are actually doing. And I'm really happy to be leading now their new music industry professional service division and uh, to announce today some of their new products that they have. Uh, they include some custom solutions like an on-demand web application, an API for pl full platform integration, and an enterprise solution where their technology lives on our client servers to ensure the highest security for valuable audio assets. Um, and so to demo the on-demand app uh, and some of these exclusive algorithms for the music industry, I'm gonna turn it over uh, to my colleague, Steve Oliver. Uh, he is the senior coordinator and engineer for Audionamics uh, and professional services. Thank you very much, Corey. And thanks everybody again to all the presenters and to everyone here who's listening today. Uh, as Corey said, I am going to introduce you to a little preview of our on-demand web app. And I'm gonna use that to separate a song into stems. So we have the ability to use our top AI technology, uh, which is part of our pro services offering and is reserved exclusively for our rights holder clients as uh, professional services clients. Um, so we have AI tech that can separate a song into bass, drums, vocals, and then other instruments. So I'm gonna just take you through that. It's a really simple process and workflow, and I'll let you hear the results uh, from the automatic separation. So I do recommend that you use headphones if you have them available, uh, especially the bass stem may not translate through computer speakers. So grab your cans and put those on. And I'm gonna share my screen. We're gonna be working with a clip from Diamonds by Sam Smith today. So I'll play that original file for you and then we'll step through the on-demand web app. Okay, so here is the song that we're going to use. Just play it all the way through so you can get a sense of what instruments are going on uh, in the song. Love that. So we have a really strong vocal. We have some uh, funky bass going on, some great drums. And let's step on over to the web app platform. So this is the interface. Again, super easy to use. You're going to just upload your song here. So I would just select that and click open. And then here, is where I choose the separation option. So we have a few different algorithms. You're gonna see kind of a sneak peek of the ones that we have available. And each of these is available for different use cases depending on the client's needs. Uh, so today we'll choose the four stem, vocals, drums, bass, and again, other. That's kind of where everything that's not those first three things goes. And then I would hit the submit button. So it's actually a really quick process. It takes about one third of the length of your song to process, but in the interest of saving time today, I process these results ahead of time. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just gonna jump over to this other tab here and let's take a listen to uh, the separation. So again, this is all done automatically with our AI tech and let's listen to the vocals. Shake it off, take the fear of feeling lost. Always me that pays the cost. I should never trust so easily. You lied to me, lied on to me, then left when my heart round your chest. Take all the money you want from me, hope you want to be. Show me how little you care, how little you care, how little you care. So just with that automated process, we were able to get a really good vocal isolation from that song. Again, this is all happening through our uh, top of the line AI technology um, reserved for our professional services clients. 
Uh, let's jump over to the drums. I'm a drummer. Would love to play along with this or, or listen to it, isolate these samples. So we got a nice thick snare in there. got that kick hitting really well. Uh, let's play the bass track. Cool. And then again, everything else is on this other. So that's it. Super fast. And now you have the stems from the song available to you. You can download them, import them into Pro Tools, uh, whatever DAW you might be using. And uh, obviously some very creative uh, possibilities, as Corey mentioned, uh, some at the beginning of this session. Uh, very very cool, Stephen. <laughs> can I ask you a couple questions? You can kill the screen share. Let me see your yes. face. Yeah. Um, really interesting. Uh, what do you see happening? Uh, Kind of, how, how do you see this getting used? Like, who who are going to be the early adopters, uh, and what are they going to be doing with it? Sure. So we already have an audience of uh, DJs and remixers, but uh, you know, Corey's working to move us into the music space, into uh, licensing, into sync placements, um, the ability to control those individual levels, maybe for uh, mm -hmm. advertising. You know, you want yeah. to take the vocal down a little bit to do a voiceover. Um, there's just endless possibilities and uh we're really happy to be now offering this through our professional services uh division and especially to have corey working on the music side of things totally makes sense i mean there's just so much happening with people um uh creating derivative content and and just like the whole remix culture has so many possibilities and now it's getting used more and more in so many user generated content scenarios TikTok and social platforms and so forth so there's lots you can do there and in sync i've been to sync conferences uh you know where people talk about what you need to have prepared for your music to go into film tv and commercials and you always you know one of the first things they say is if you have stems you're, you know, you're already more commercially viable at that point. So, um, uh, pretty, pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to see Jade in the chat says I have hundreds of tracks that I've lost the original files, but have the wave. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's interesting. That's another thing, right? If you yeah. want to come back from archive that's, stuff. Absolutely. Yeah, that's it. And some, some of, you know, some of the cooler projects that I've had the pleasure of working on are, you know, exactly that scenario that Jade, Jade explained is, you know, older recordings or recordings that they lost the multi-tracks for when, you know, they need to have that sort of isolation to be able to do something with. It doesn't necessarily always mean the stems. They they might want to remix the song in a different way and, you know, want to have that individual control with, with, uh, with some of the music. So, uh, yeah, lots of different creative ways. Possibilities are really endless, regardless of how cliche that sounds. But, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, I'll give you another one, cool. Corey. And this... this yeah, what's up? Somebody over in the NAM chat, Aaron Baxter says, I can't tell you how many times I've been asked when mixing music for dance classes to remove something or boost something in a song, this would save my life. <laughs> so there's another use totally. case that you wouldn't awesome. have thought of right let's out of the chat. gate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's chat. There's so many cool use cases and I'm excited to uh, to hear how people might want to use this technology uh, in, in professional ways and uh, in the music community. So it's, it's so funny, it's so simple to demo it um, and yet I'm sure there's so much going underneath the hood to get it to do that. Um, how long would that, 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 um, that breakdown you just did, I know you had, didn't want us to keep, keep us waiting, but how long would it take for that song to get, uh, pulled into stems on the cloud? How long would I have to wait? Good question. So it's usually about uh, one third of the length of the song. So if you had a three minute song, it would take about one minute to process that That's super amazing. fast. Yeah. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. And, and, e and even I, I want to add to Jade's point, like even if you have like a, a big folder of songs or like a live show that's, you know, a couple hours long, uh, we can we can just bulk process that. And, you know, we can turn that around within within an hour, uh, depending on how long the concerts are, how big the files are. But there's quick ways to do this. Now. Right. It's yeah. all just a matter of processing and assigning servers to it. So perfect. Awesome. Uh, Corey, Stephen, thanks so much for coming in, playing the crazy Thank creators you. game with us and, and doing the spontaneous thing. Great job. 
And uh, we've posted links in the chat if anyone wants to get in touch or try out Audionomics. Uh, love to have you guys check it out. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you, Dimitri. So we're going to bring in for our final um, uh, demo for the day, Mike Martin with Casio. Mike, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me here. It's wonderful it's to be, you know, here at Virtual Nam this year. I know it's, everybody's been talking about. It. I wish we could be there in person, but we're making the best of of the situation. Have you done a lot of demos on Digital Nam this this week? Or we we absolutely have. We did all eight sessions. We've even done, you know, lots of of private events this week on on dealer request and more. So we've been quite busy. A lot of time in front of the camera, looking at the screen, but but all good. Yeah, cool. Well, thanks for joining in our crazy version of almost like an open mic for instruments and software and stuff. And you've been Absolutely. patient. We actually have a little more time. Uh, so you, you can feel free. I think at around 12 p.m. Pacific, we're going to switch over to networking in the hop inside. Okay. But so you got a solid 10, 11 minutes and all right. <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> all right. I plan for five, but I'll, I'll make the most of it. So uh, what I have here today is is a new digital piano from Casio. Just started shipping just a few months ago. So this is its official first NAM debut. It's called the CDP S350. And you know that's a quick look at some of the, the specs. I know it might be a little hard to read all that online, so I'm going to take you through it. But what I wanted you to see in this picture was the form factor. Um, this is an instrument, and I've got it here in front of me, that is barely larger than the keys themselves. It's the lightest, smallest, thinnest 88-note uh, weighted action digital piano ever built other than its sister model, the CDP-S150. So uh, incredibly small and lightweight. This one's 24 pounds, so incredibly portable. Now, um, Casio really has delivered so much with this product. You know, we're a brand that's been known for, for value, and the CDP-S350 is, is no exception. This, in, this instrument has hundreds of sounds on board, 700 different tones on board, um, and much, much more. But at first, I want to dive into, you know, the most important sound, which is the grand piano. So let's give a listen. So what you hear, this is this is an amazing, uh, you know, nine foot concert grand sample that we have in here. That's incredibly dynamic. You know, it will respond to to what you put in it. And of course, there's a variety of of additional piano tones and 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 variety within this category. There's some that are a little bit more uh, mellow. And there's you know rock and roll pianos in there as well. So regardless of what you need stylistically in a piano, the CDP S350 will deliver. I forgot to mention you know what we're looking at here with this keyboard itself. It's a um, 88 note scaled weighted hammer action keyboard, and it even has simulated I ebony and ivory textures on the keys. So despite the size of this instrument, it feels absolutely fantastic. And the, the texture on the keys will give you a nice, confident grip wherever you happen to be playing. So let's dive back into the sounds. I mentioned there's 700 of them on board. But despite having so much selection, Casio made this really easy to use. Just to the left of the display, there's a category button. And each time I hit that category button, you can see on the screen, it will take me to another category of instrument. And I can even use the knob to scroll through the categories. And once I find the category I want, then I can select the different tones. So in every category, the CDP S350 delivers. We've got, uh, you know, really authentic Rhodes electric pianos. And, and there's variety, you know, for days in here. You get into the, like the Wurlitzers as well, you know. So you've got the appropriate period effects on each of the sounds when you dial them up. There's even, you know, such attention to detail to the sounds, things like, you know, clavinets. You've got all the key off detail. There's even multiple pickup positions of the clavinet represented. 
So, so much attention to detail with all the different sounds. I'm going to give you a few more highlights and then get into some of the other um, features of the instrument. You know, as keyboardists, we're often tasked with playing a variety of different instrument sounds. Um, guitar is, is certainly one of those that we're always challenged. You know. So when you play some of these sounds, in this case, if I strike the key a little bit harder, we're getting a, a slide up to that note. That would be something, even with a pitch bend wheel, that would be something very difficult to articulate on a keyboard real nicely. So as you go through many of these sounds, there's often something in the name that will indicate, in this case, V for velocity, that if you play it a little harder, you're going to get something special. So the, you know, the sound set in here is perfect for songwriters, gigging musicians, wherever you happen to need, you know, an 88 note weighted action keyboard, it's going to deliver. Here's one of the really important categories, strings. This is one of my favorites. just beautiful expressive strings and of course the question that usually comes up is well you know can I layer that with my piano and of course you can so um, I'll just show you real quick here how fast and easy that is to do I'm going to get back to uh, my registrations here real quick and it's Nam. so yeah things are going wrong <laughs> in the live session I think I had it in record mode. That's what I did. All right. So I've got the piano back up. Um, so over on the right-hand side of the keyboard, there's a dedicated button here for record. So, or excuse me, for layer. And so it defaults to strings as keyboard players. That's, you know, we're going to play electric piano and or an acoustic piano sound and hit that layer button. And strings is usually the one you're going to go for first. But if you're looking for other things, you're doing the Bruce Hornsby type of thing. You know, it, you, you can put that synth pad behind it as well. So one other thing you might have noticed over here on the right hand side, I've stored some things for quick recall. So, um, you know, you find combinations of sounds, uh, you know, a couple of sounds layered together or a rhythm, which I'm going to get to in a little bit. You can just press one button and get to that super fast. So, you know, not time today to go through every category of, of instrument on here. But uh, again, as I said, um, the, the CDP S350 delivers in all of them, um, you know, brass sounds. <laughs> You know, again, th that would be hard to play if, if Casio didn't put those those amazing art articulations in there. So, um, you know, as a digital piano, the CDP S350 has got some other things that, you know, regardless of where your, your skill level is at, that are really handy. Of course, it has a metronome in here um, for practice, but it's certainly a lot more fun to to play with other kinds of of tones and rhythms. So uh, I've got an example here for you. Um, there's 200 different drum patterns built in here. So and if you listen carefully, there's all kinds of really nice ghost notes and everything that goes along with it. So you can trigger fills with on the front panel. You can also set up your, your pedals to control different aspects. So... I mean, wherever your music might take you, um, the CDP S350 will deliver. A few other things about this instrument, about the, the physical things real fast. I know I've gone over my five minutes, so thank you for giving me a little extra time. Cool. I just want to show you, give you a quick back panel view. Um, every Casio product that is $99 and up has what's called class compliant USB MIDI on the back. And by class compliant, what we're talking about is that means you can use it with your Mac, your PC, your tablet, your phone, and it simply works without having to download drivers. So 
plug it in. Uh, we do have our own apps. So we have an app called Cordana Play for Piano, which is a great music education app. Uh, works perfectly with the CDP S350. You know, also, um, you know, gives you access to everything under the hood, but will also help you learn to play. Awesome, Mike. Great job. Thank you so did, much for, for being here. And did I mention this piano is only $549? No, US. you didn't. Wow. <laughs> so, it sounds yeah, amazing. Incre incredible value. Wow, that's great. Thank you so much for jumping in with this crazy uh, session and doing that great demo. Really sounded amazing. I'm impressed even how great it sounds across all these internet connections in the digital forum. Yeah. And, uh, your playing is awesome. Love Thank you. Hearing all that stuff. Lots of positive stuff in the chat. There was one quick question from yep. John Fiorello asking, how easy is it to change an effect like rotary speed? Ah, OK. So you know the CDPS line is, you know, this is the entry into our, our stage piano or digital piano line. So um, there are different organ presets that have different rotary settings, but it, it doesn't have that type of real-time control. You have to upgrade to our Privia lineup to get real-time effects control, expression pedal inputs, and things like that. But you're, you're only looking at the, you know, in an 88-note model in the $800 range. Um, there are some models in the $400 range that are, you know, 61 keys, which is really appropriate for organs, you know, unweighted action that will give you that type of real-time control as well. Well, people are uh, saying, great job, Mike. Need to get one of those. Luann Williams says, very cool, Mike. So nice to see you. So yeah, I guess you got awesome. friends in yep. the audience as well. Great. Thanks, Mike. And if you want to stick around, it's up to you. But anyone that's with us in the NAM side, you can keep chatting in the in the, in the the text chat. If you're over on Hop In with us, we've got networking open on the left side of your screen. You see where it says networking now. You can just click on that, and you'll get to go ahead and, and get matched up with somebody else and do a little speed networking on video chat. It's super fun. You know, some friend innovator, some soon to be friend will be there waiting for you on the other end. So go ahead and Great. jump in. Thanks again, Mike. Thanks thank to you. everybody. Uh, thank you so much, Stephen and Corey with Audionomics, uh, to Tobias from Teenage Engineering, Brian with Native Instruments showing us the Machine Plus, and Chagall kicking off with that beautiful demo of the Mimu gloves. What a great lineup. Thanks, for everybody, for cooperating. We've got an another event just like this tomorrow at the same time. It's not on the NAM schedule. Um, you can sign up with our hop-in link, which uh, was just posted in our chat. And in addition, if you're at NAM, you can go to the... Uh, uh, Music Tectonics exhibitor booth, and we will live stream tomorrow's session there. Um, lots of great folks presenting as part of that as well. Um, so we've got uh, Yamaha demonstrating a digital saxophone. Roland's going to be there. We've got the 2.4 sync, which are these little motion sensor expressive um, uh, controllers for MIDI. We've got a really cool fluid pitch plugin, which allows you to tune how your pitch wheel works, and then Audible Reality is going to come in and demonstrate some personalized audio experiences. So make sure to check out the links in the chat. Come to the uh, NAM Music Tectonics Innovators Hub tomorrow at the same time. Or for those of you who are in Hop In right now, just go on over and click on networking. I'll see you in there. I'll be with you. Let's do a couple of video chats. See you there. <laughs>